Hey guys, in November and December last year, I spent three weeks in Southeast Asia. After over two years being locked up during the pandemic, it was great to get back over there. As some of you will know, I spent four years studying at the National University of Singapore and a further two years working for an Indonesian billionaire's family office. In this video, I'll be comparing the cost of living between Auckland, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur and Bangkok. These cities are by no means comparable of course, but through this video hopefully you'll have a better idea of what it costs to live there. First, I'll be discussing incomes in each country and their tax obligations. Second, I'll look at the typical expenses such as housing, utilities, transport, groceries and fast food, among others. Make sure you watch right the way through as some of the findings are very surprising. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see more content just like this in the personal finance and investing space. I've also converted all values into New Zealand dollar at the rate effective as at the time of filming. For this video, I'm using a rate of 87 Singapore cents to the New Zealand dollar, 2.84 Malaysian ringgit and 22.3 Thai baht. Let's kick things off by looking at the minimum wage in each country. This will bring context that will be important later when we evaluate prices. In New Zealand, we have a minimum wage of $21.20. When we look at other countries such as those in Southeast Asia, many of them don't set the minimum wage at the hourly level, but rather in monthly or even daily terms. So I've adjusted this assuming a 37.5 hour work week, which is pretty conservative for these countries. Thailand and Malaysia recently increased their minimum wage rates now coming in at a little over $2 and $3 an hour respectively. Singapore on the other hand does not currently have a minimum wage. Now aside from minimum wages, we also have entry level wages in the food service industry. In Malaysia, many food establishments advertised entry level roles at the minimum wage. In Thailand, many offered rates that were modestly higher. In Singapore, the going rate is around $15.59 per hour in New Zealand dollars at McDonald's. If we now look at the wages, once taxes have been deducted, you can see that Southeast Asian countries have a pretty low tax rate for those lower incomes. If you consider the fact that they also split out their superannuation contributions, if we add those back in, we get a much more realistic number. If we consider Singapore for example, their CPF system is a bit like a supercharged KiwiSaver, with citizens paying 20% of their salary into it and the employer matching with another 17%. Taking account of all these factors, relative to a New Zealand food service after tax income, Singaporeans earn a third less, Thai five times less, and Malaysians six times less. Moving along to average wages, taking a very simplistic view, New Zealand and Singapore are about par. In practice however, Singaporeans generally earn an extra month of salary by default, and as we discussed their superannuation fund is 37% on top of this amount, pushing their incomes much higher than their Kiwi counterparts. Moving over to Malaysia and Thailand, their after tax and superannuation take home pay is roughly a quarter of their Kiwi counterparts. Thailand had limited data to work from and anecdotally, the wages in Bangkok are somewhere between 18 and 25,000 Thai baht per month. So hopefully this gives a rough picture of the salary environment for each country. This of course is a very high level analysis and is only meant to act as a rough indicator. The regulatory environment in Asia for employment is very different from New Zealand, making it near impossible to compare apples with apples. Now let's take a look at the price of food, starting with fast food. The price of a Big Mac varies widely, from a low of $3.64 in Malaysia to $7.80 in Thailand. Aucklanders pay slightly above this, with the price generally around $8.50. If we look at the McChicken burger, for some reason in Southeast Asia, their price is very low. In Singapore and Malaysia, the price is around two to three dollars, and in Bangkok, it's about five dollars sixty. Here in Auckland, McDonald's usually sell the burger for around eight dollars. Jumping over to KFC, Bangkok has the cheapest price for a Zinger box at just under five dollars. Malaysia is just above five dollars, and Singapore is higher at nine dollars. Kiwis, on the other hand, pay around fourteen dollars for the same meal, depending, of course, on the location. Moving along to the supermarket items, we have the price of chicken breast. Singaporeans pay the highest price at around $16 kiwi per kilo. Those in Auckland and Bangkok pay about $14, and those in Kuala Lumpur pay around $8 a kilo. For beef mints, kiwis pay the lowest price at $14 a kilo. In Malaysia the price is $21, Bangkok $23, and Singapore $35. For a 1.5 litre bottle of coke, Malaysians pay the lowest price at just over a dollar. Thailand is slightly higher than this, while Kiwis and Singaporeans pay around three dollars. And finally, Anchor Butter, with New Zealand of course being the cheapest as it's made here at $3.50 per 227 gram pack. 
Malaysians pay a wee bit more than us at $4, while Singaporeans and Thai pay around $6. Now let's look at the price of buying or renting a property in each city. For this comparison, I use the website Numbio that sources many data points to approximate prices from across the world. As landed property has more variables to consider, I've used apartments as the basis for this comparison. I've also ignored government initiatives such as HDB in Singapore and just used private property as the basis. On a square meter basis, Singapore has the most expensive property, coming in at more than twice as expensive as Auckland. Bangkok is about 35% cheaper than Auckland and Malaysia is lower by about three quarters. When considering the approximated mortgage rates, New Zealanders are currently paying the highest rates, with the others quickly catching up. If we assume 100% of the purchase price is financed, Singaporeans are paying about $1,300 a year in interest to finance a single square meter of an apartment. Aucklanders pay about $880, those in Bangkok pay about half of that, and those in Kuala Lumpur pay about a fifth of that. This of course ignores any stamp duties, ground rent, and those kinds of miscellaneous costs that you may have to consider. Moving through to renting a city apartment, Singapore continues to have the most expensive market with a one bedroom CBD apartment going for over 4,000 New Zealand dollars a month. Having visited many of my friends over there, a common topic was to talk about how much their rents have shot up by over the past year, by rates as high as 70% year on year. So it's certainly tough to be a renter there at the moment. Prices in Auckland are about half of Singapore, Bangkok less than a quarter, and Kuala Lumpur 85% lower. Looking at the average three bedroom prices, Singapore continues to be relatively more expensive, making it clearly the most expensive for buying or renting real estate. Moving on to utilities, the first one is fiber internet. In New Zealand, for 800 megabits per second, we pay $100 a month through Spark. Malaysians pay slightly more than this for the same speeds as us. However, in Singapore and Thailand, they get much faster speeds at much lower prices, around the $55 a month mark. So they definitely do better in this regard. Mobile plans are the priciest in New Zealand, with a 50 gigabyte plan costing $85 a month. Singapore is slightly cheaper, coming in at $82, but comes with 80 gigabytes versus Spark's 50 and has caps on calling minutes. Malaysia comes in at less than half the cost at $34 a month for 50 gigabytes and unlimited calls. And Thailand is even lower at just $26 a month. However, the calls are capped at 250 minutes. When looking at electricity, the results aren't much different. Auckland and Singapore yet again come in as the most expensive. The Thai pay roughly half what the Kiwis are and Malaysians roughly a quarter. Water is horrendously expensive in Auckland, costing over 10 times the amount charged in Kuala Lumpur and Bangkok, despite us being surrounded by water. Singaporeans pay roughly half what we do here in Auckland. That rounds out the cost of utilities. Let's now compare the cost of transportation, starting with fuel. The standard octane fuel in Asia is 95, so I've used that as a reference. Singaporeans pay the highest price for petrol, coming in at around $3.10 per litre. Aucklanders pay about 60 cents less, Thai just over half, and Malaysia pays the lowest price at just 72 cents. To save on the cost of fuel, you'd think Singaporeans would look to purchase an electric car. Let's now assess that by looking at the price of a Tesla Model 3. For the standard rear-wheel drive version, New Zealand for once comes in cheaper than Southeast Asia. People in Bangkok pay $14,000 more than us, but the biggest surprise is the price in Singapore. And no, that price isn't a typo. The price over there basically starts at $80,000, is doubled by a luxury tax, and then after government subsidies for electric vehicles, ends up at $112,000. But then you also need to purchase a 10-year certificate of entitlement just to own the car. At the latest bidding, the price has ballooned to over 105,000 Singapore dollars, pushing the price up to about the same price as a luxury vehicle here. Looking at a base model Mazda CX-5, New Zealand is again cheaper at $43,000. Malaysia comes in slightly higher than this at $48,000. Thailand a lot higher at $63,000. And Singapore is stratospheric at $212,000. So if you're in Singapore, what do you do? That brings us along to public transport, which is phenomenal in Southeast Asia, but pretty awful here in Auckland. All three cities have a robust train network as their population densities are high to support the service. Kuala Lumpur also has high-speed rail to its airport and a monorail running through the city. Comparing prices to get around on the train, Aucklanders pay more than twice as much as residents in these cities. For a 10 kilometer trip, in Bangkok you'll pay $2.78, in Singapore $1.75, in Kuala Lumpur at just under a dollar. In Auckland of course, they currently have a promotion for $3, but the usual price would be six. Though Auckland and New Zealand have cheaper cars, Southeast Asia has a much cheaper public transport network. This will be an impediment for Auckland in its future as it tries to convince its residents to reduce their dependence on vehicles. So that rounds out my video today on the cost of living difference between Auckland, New Zealand and the Southeast Asian cities of Bangkok 
Bangkok, Singapore, and Kuala Lumpur. If you like this video and want to see more content just like it, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.